Hello, lovely people. How are you doing? Um, one second, I just need to uh, focus my camera. Oh, dear. Now, where are we? This one, I think. Is that the one? Uh, anyway, um, yes. I hope you're doing well on this um, very sunny day. Uh, I have the advantage that my space, it's, um, it's a bit like a greenhouse when the, when the doors are closed. So, uh, so I'm here as if it's summer, <laughs> um, which suits me. I like, I like a bit of heat. Um, and yeah, since the, um, the clampdown on social gatherings, which was yesterday, um, I believe that I can't go to the sauna anymore. So, so that suits me to um, have a bit of sunshine. Yes, interesting times, people, don't you think? When I meditated this morning, there was a different feel in the air. I, I, I must say, I'm, I'm very glad that finally um, uh, authority, the authorities are starting to recognise that, that we need to put some sort of measures in place. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't want to make this a discussion, about a political discussion on, on how the virus is being dealt with, but um, it, it did seem to me utterly irresponsible the way it was being dealt with before. Um, but um, yes, so at least, um, at least there's some measures in place right now to uh, to slow down the spread. And um, yeah, but what I was saying was this morning when I was meditating, there was something different in the. Um, in the ether, <laughs> if you like, uh, it felt like a, a surrender of sorts, um, kind of um, a drop, some, something dropped, something was dropped. And, you know, I have no direct physical evidence of that, uh, it was just what I felt when I was meditating. I felt like that uh, something in the psyche uh, of this country, at least, has. Um, dropped into being present to what is, to the reality of what is. And, um, and this, is a t this is a time that we can use to reflect, to, to uh, be with ourselves. But we have this technology, we have this interconnectedness through, through the World Wide Web. And um, you know, I've been, I've seen it as a means of communicating to the whole world. Um, the, 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 the message that I have around the way to treat the body. And um, for, for a long time, I've been, I've been teaching online since uh, 2010, is it? Probably before that, I was in France. I was living in France at the time and uh, teaching some Americans in uh, a Scaravelli-inspired school in, um, in Austin, um, led by Darlene, uh, Darlene Vink was one of the, one of the directors. It, uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was, um, it was radical at the time, but it, I knew it was the way to, the way to go, because we are communicating across the globe now. You know, there's less facility for censorship. There's, um, there's something in this. Something a major change in this um, era, and um, yes, we can we can we can be in touch. I can share my stuff with you, and um, yeah, you can come and work with me. So, it, without having to uh, risk the contact thing, you know, I'm I'm I had a workshop lined up in Twickenham for the end of the month, and it occurred to me that I. I could just do it online um, with everyone. It, it's so simple for me. I have the, I have the setup of it, and I'm very, very familiar with with um, uh, working this way and picking up cues and clues from people's uh, subtle movements on the screen. You see, so um, I would, you know, I, I, I intend 
to use this time to really share my work. So I'm, so I'm thinking of, um, uh, I'm sorry, my TV's just gone off. Um, I'm thinking of putting on a weekly um, workshop, Saturday workshop, uh, Saturday morning workshop to, to sort of set the feel of things for the day, for the weekend and, and um, yeah. And I've, I put a post up on, on, the, on the thing. So if you're interested in that, uh, let me know. Um, yeah, I'll, be, I'll, I'll get a, a list of people. And, and because it is live, it's a, it's a real workshop, as in, you know, I work with you. Um, I have a limited number of people. I, I like to keep it between 10 and 12, 12 absolute maximum. And, um, and there's also the option of... Um, tuning in without your video showing if you if you kind of want to dip in and and uh, you know do as, do as little as you like <laughs> you know uh, if, if you want to be on screen then I'll be there responding to what you're doing if you don't then you can um, just take what you like from the thing uh, there'll be there'll be a few sort of non-video places for, for those people that prefer that but anyway uh, I'm not I'm not um, so I'm not here to, to sell that. I'm, I'm just seeing it as a way of, of staying in touch with you all, you know, and, um, and, and keeping the work going. Because um, at times like this, this is when we really need to get real with ourselves, I think. And, and that's what my yoga is all about. It's about getting real with yourself. You know, actually, what is, how, actually how, what is my body saying to me? Actually, how, uh, what is my part in that? How, how am I supporting myself? What's the quality? What's my intention behind my actions? What's the quality of my actions? And, uh, and how am I actually occupying this space? And, and, and right now we all have to stop. We all have to stop for a bit. And this is a perfect time for practice. And I would like to be instrumental in, in uh, helping you with that. Um, yeah, I've also got weekly classes, there's online courses coming up. Uh, I've got so much um, uh, just raring to go. Uh, get in touch if you want to uh, get in, in on something and um, I'm sure I'll find something that's appropriate for you. Anyway, um, yeah, I wasn't really meaning that to be a sales pitch. It's just, it's just um, yeah, now's the time. Now's the time for practice. And uh, I, I would love to be here to support you. So in the meantime, what can we do? Uh, I don't know if I've got any questions or not. I, I, I'll have a look, quick look on the Facebook page. My feeling is not. Um, people are a bit... Um, yeah, I can't, I can't see any. But um, uh, let's see. Let's go on to here. Oh, sorry for the pause. Okay, no, no I haven't haven't got any direct questions. So, um, what what I was thinking I was do, uh, I would do. Um, there was a question from one of my students up in Scotland who had the symptoms. He he, he came down with the um, uh, symptoms of of the uh, coronavirus. And um, he, he locked in and said it was getting better after a couple of days. But um, he wanted some advice. And um, my suggestion was to do this practice called uh, Maha Pranayamasana. Um, it, it's, uh, it's my own kind of invention. It, it's to do with the envirosomatic thing, as in um, you get yourself to um, engage with contact. But it's a, it's a pranayama, as in it's, a, it's breath work. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, breath work with a, with a purpose. Hang on, I've got to do some technical stuff here for a second. Uh, right. Here we go. Yeah, so uh, I, th I think we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll get involved with... Um, Something that, that can help, because uh, some of the symptoms are, of course, uh, difficulty in breathing and um, 
Yes, yeah, the basic, uh, that's basically difficulty in breathing, soreness in the throat and, and these things. And <clears throat> the, the, the worst thing you can do is panic. The worst thing you can do is, is become stressed. And it, uh, the, the thing that I was talking about is a kind of ubiquitous uh, um, setup for, for yoga. As in, it, it, it's a practice that can teach you everything you need to know. And uh, so I'm just going to change camera so you can see me clearly on the mat. There we go. Uh, oh, I've got a, got a comment from someone, or is that, is that um, for this or something else? Let me just check. There's a comment from Dorothy. Uh, I hope you're well, Dorothy. Uh, let's see. Is there, is there anything I can... Mm, no, there, there wasn't a comment. It's somewhere, somewhere else. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, group, let's have a look-see. Um, yeah, okay, um, I'll get on with it. Yes, so th this, this is a good thing to do. You don't have to be well to do this practice. Um, I'm going to do it lying down because that's the surface I have, okay? Um, if, if you're feeling, because I understand the, the shallowness of breath and the, the stuffed upness um, is really interfering, so you might not want to lie down to do it, but you, you do need a surface behind you um, all the way up to the back of the head. So a good, um, a good firm chair is good. If you've got a lazy boy lounger or something, that, that would be ideal because you've got nice angles and you've got um, support for your legs as well. Um, but you do need your feet to be on a surface that you can press against. Uh, and other than that, that's about it really. So, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. The, the, the positioning is straightforward. Uh, if you're lying down, it's, it's roughly this. Um, feet underneath the knees so that you can press through them, so you can stand through your feet and uh, make the base of the spine light by doing so. Uh, base of the spine in contact with whatever it is. Uh, in this case, it's the mat. And, uh, and uh, if you're sitting, the, your contact would be, if you're sitting on a chair, for example, your contact would be more underneath your thighs and the base of the spine might be missing contact. So you would need to nuzzle it into the corner of the chair so that you had a point of contact there. Okay, um, so it's just, this is just the setup. And then, uh, yes, if you're sitting, uh, the feet will need to be on a surface, whether, whether, it's, um, whether it's the floor or the you know, foot, foot rest or whatever it is, you need a surface there. And the upper back needs a surface, particularly between the shoulder blades, um, but with the possibility of changing that over to the shoulder blades themselves. So basically you need to be able to kind of pull the shoulder blades into the ground uh, to make the upper spine a bit uh, more forwards in the body and somewhere for the head to touch. So if, if you have a, a head support, you kind of don't want, you kind of don't want the head support to be pushing your head forwards. So if you can organize it so there's a resting back feeling. And this is the key. It's all these points of contact behind us um, need to be available to us as a, uh, for our, our reference, our sensory referencing. You know, we need to be able to feel those points of contact and engage with them. So if you're, um, I won't fuss too much with the details. If you are feeling ill, you won't have the energy to bother with the details too much. But what you do need to do is you need to engage. You need to, if you're, if you're sitting, you could put your hands on your lap to help you engage back from your hands. If you're lying down, you can do that. You can put your hands on your thighs in this way. And uh, the purpose of the touch, wherever it is, it's to get you in relationship, direct rela relationship, in a physical way, to the surfaces behind you. 
as in you embrace, you engage. You engage with the contact behind you. You do it from your hands, you do it from your feet. And you, you allow the breath to become a function of that engagement, as in you're, you're pressing against the chair, the, the mat, whatever it is. You're using your hands, you're using your feet. And you're doing that to breathe. Now the, the effort will change the quality of the breath so that it slows down, so there'll be less of a, a, a rush to get the breath in if you feel blocked up. I wouldn't be lying down if, you, if I felt blocked up right now. I'd be using a chair or something. But pressing into that surface behind you to breathe kind of invites the back of the body to open up and broaden. To accommodate the arrival of the breath in a, in a slowed down fashion. And then um, the release of the breath is simply that. Now, but if you're lying down, it's kind of a bit easier in some ways because the release of the breath can lead to a kind of sense of weight dropping back. But um, if you're blocked up and you're sitting, my advice would be to have another go at pressing as the breath leaves. So you embrace the contact behind you to receive the breath into the space behind you. If you're feeling jammed up, though it's essential that you get a sense of the head being in contact with something behind you and engaging with it to create a broadness in the skull and across the back of the neck. And uh, it's very important that the hands do something to help the shoulders kind of anchor back into the surface. The two together, they kind of create, um, uh, what do they create? They create a relationship that gives you more space in the lungs and that is, that, that, um, that modifies the rate of the breath without you interfering with it, if that makes sense. Now, if, if you're doing this and you're lying down, and um, and uh, because you're you know you're feeling well anyway, it's it's very good practice. It's very powerful. It's um, I'm actually putting together a, a pranayama series, uh, online course series for people that is going to be re pre-recorded. But um, um, if if you're engaging with this, it, the if you if you're if you're well, uh, that your difficulty will be in keeping your mind steady on the. Um, following, the following the instructions to stay mindful of engaging with the arrival of the breath from your contact with the space behind you and the release of the breath into the contact. Both, both are very physical actions, both involve changes in the core of the body and the ribs and that sort of thing. And um, what, what, what it's relaxing for is the mind. So what generally happens is people relax and then they stop practicing. And, um, and that's fine, you know, if, you, if it's given, if you're not feeling well and um, the practice calms you down enough to go to sleep, great. Because um, you know, rest is the best cure, really. But um, stress-free rest is even better. And by being with the contact behind you, with both the arrival and the release of the breath as a physical act, as a physical relationship, you get to guide the breath in an incredibly useful way. And there are some pranayamas that it relates to, but um, 
I don't want to go into the details of that, because what I'm looking for is an actual solution for people when they feel rough, and this will do it. Engaging, embracing the space behind you to receive the breath. Doing the same to release the breath. And it sort of brings you back into the present moment. It's, it's uh, one of my go-to practices in my enviro-somatic approach to bodywork. Um, it helps people arrive in their centers in a, in a real way, as opposed to an imagined and intellectual way. It doesn't really involve too much thought because you're busy embracing and relating to the space behind you as you breathe and as you release the breath. Okay. So, um, yes, I hope, I hope that was um, useful for you. It's, uh, you know, I, I've, been t I've been teaching this very, uh, quite different stuff, this different way of doing things for a long time, and um, it's taken me ages to get around to calling it something different. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the uh, enviro-somatic, idea of things, the, um, the, the idea that um, the, the way, the thing that we experience in our bodies, the way we experience ourselves, is a direct function of how we engage with our environment. It seems so damn obvious to me. And uh, it's, it's been seeming obvious for a long while, but um, I, I feel like there's a, um, there's a change in the, in the collective psyche that is making making this seem more, uh, make more sense to people. And um, if you followed if you follow those instructions, I, I can pretty much guarantee you feel a bit more spacious, a bit more centered, a bit, a bit more here and now, which is kind of the point of the whole thing. Um, yeah. So I hope that was useful for you. Do leave me encouraging comments so that I know that um, I am helping, if I am. And uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm brimming with ideas of how to keep a sense of community going and practice, group practice, where we can learn from each other and work with each other. Um, the, the, I, I, you know, I prefer having people in front of me, of course, but I can have them in front of me on the screen. Um, and you know, I do enjoy these Facebook live things where I'm sort of um, get a, an opportunity to share where I am, I'm at, if, and um, answer some questions if people have any. Um, but but it's uh, in the realms of ideas, you see. Because I, I can't see you practice, I, I'm not interacting, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing myself with you, is all I'm doing here. Uh, but, so I do, uh, I, I kind of need community, I need, I need people to work with, I need people in front of me, um, so that I can help. Because uh, without being able to do that, um, I, who am I? I don't know. You know, I need, I need you guys. So if you'd like to join me on something, like I said, I've got, I've got plenty of ideas. Um, uh, officially what's in place is my next sensory intelligence course. The next one is core intelligence. It incorporates understand, understanding the deeper um, movements of the breath, which will take you into sort of chakra territory, I guess. Um, uh, the mechanics of the breath as, uh, as well, because we're kind of, you know, we have mechanical thinking, so you, so it's useful to understand how it works on a on a mechanical level. Uh, but um, yeah, it'll, it'll involve the the innate wisdom of the breath and the spine, 
It's uh, the core intelligence series is an honouring of the Van der Scarveni quote um, for elongation and extension of the spine. The pushing and pulling has to stop. It really does. And uh, it's uh, when you can create conditions that um, take this sort of conflict with the spine out. The spine is free to move in surprising ways. Uh, I'm, I'm very versed with uh, creating those conditions f for people. And when I work with people live, um, I can catch the moment when integration is there. And that is the moment that movement is so, so simple and so unexpected. And, um, and that's the bit that, that's the part that's mis missing because uh, we're so busy creating the right conditions, we, we don't really notice. Um, we don't really notice that the spine is free because uh, we're not it's not we're not familiar with that feeling so that, that's that's going to be the next um, online course that's for dedicated teachers practitioners uh, any, anyone on the um, personal development path that wants the real deal the, uh, these courses these sensory intelligence courses are, are for you they're, they're quite they're very intense uh, six. Uh, I'm doing two intro workshops so people can just see if they like it or not. Um, the first one is the 26th of March, I think. It's a Thursday, Thursday evening, hour and a half. And uh, I'm doing two intro workshops and then the course itself begins mid-April. Yeah, so that, that's, for, that's for you obsess obsessives out there that want to really get to grips with the patterns of the body and how, how we interact with our environment and how we can create conditions for nature to arise in our movement. And uh, I also run weekly classes which are still, uh, I think as we speak, they're still um, at a half price, a discount rate. I, I might bring the price down anyway just because um, of these times, you know, people don't feel as free with their money. so. <laughs> Um, so it's for, it would be appropriate to do that, but um, uh, at the moment they're, they're, they're very cheap. You can drop in for a tenner for a one hour bespoke class with a small group of people where I'm directly answering your questions, yoga solutions. Uh, that's, on, that's on today, that's uh, Tuesdays and I do uh, there's one class at 11.30 for an hour and there's another class at 6.30pm for an hour. Uh, gold members on the website have access to to either class at any time, um, as well as the recorded yoga solution series. So, what else is there? Um, yes. Oh, yes. And and this idea Saturday workshops. I, I've um, you know my Saturdays are usually booked up with workshops for other people in different places um, for you know uh, British world stuff and and whatnot. And with this pending lockdown, I, I presume the social um, restriction thing will start to uh, will, will expand as far as workshops and um, social gatherings of all sorts. So, um, so it seems to make sense, you know. I, like I say, I want to keep the yoga community going. I want to keep sharing my stuff. I want to feel connected and. Um, we can do that online. If you're if you're interested in me running half day workshops, I'll, I'll make them dirt cheap. Um, I don't know, twenty five, thirty quid or something for for um, a good two and a half hours or so. Um, yeah, something like that sounds sounds about right. Um, yeah, I, I can do a I can do a whole series of Saturday workshops for a while. I think I'm not sure what, what I've got booked up, but I'll, I'll have a look see. And if you're interested in that, then uh, do let me know and uh, so I can get on with making it happen, okay? Um, yeah, that's all I have to share today. I hope you enjoyed the breathing practice. It's a little taster of an online breath, sacred breath course I'm developing. Um, yeah, and... I'll see you same time, same place next week, if not before. If I, if I put on a workshop this Saturday, maybe I'll see you there. So, in the meantime, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva Method, the Enviro-Somatic Approach to Body Work. 
signing off until the same time, same place next week. Lots of love to you all. Go well.